So we'll look a little bit at the algebra behind uh, what's going on in this theorem. So this is A is diagonalizable exactly when A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So the algebra behind this So if our matrix, we're going to look at it column by column. So our first column we'll call V1 and V2 for the second column through Vn for the last column where Vi is the ith, the ith eigenvector. And D is going to be the identity, except it will have all the eigenvalues down the diagonal. So D is the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues. And of course, they're going to be in the same order. So, vi, or yeah, so like v1 is going to correspond to lambda 1. So, v1 would be the eigenvector, lambda 1 would be the eigenvalue. And then, of course, v2 would be a second eigenvector, lambda 2 would be a second eigenvalue. So, I'll just write the little correspondence vi corresponds to lambda i. So, it's the ith eigenvalue and ith eigenvector. <coughs> And then if we look at, of course, there's some matrix A that these are all uh, connected to. So A is our original matrix with eigenvalues V1 through Vn and eigen, or eigenvectors V1 through Vn and eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda n. We're going to look at the multiplication in a slightly weird way. We're going to look at it AP is equal to DP. And normally, I'll switch to that purple marker for a second. Normally it was P inverse AP equals D. That was a standard uh, similarity relationship right there. And all we did, uh oh. Yeah, it would be. Ah. It would be flipped normally. Let's see if my notes might be wrong. So let's look at A, A times V1. So with all these assumptions we made here, V1 is an eigenvector of A. So what will this equal with what's already on the board right now? So this would be the lambda 1, v1, like that. So it's an eigenvector. So if we multiply by a, that's the same as multiplying by lambda. And then, of course, a v2 is lambda 2 v2, and et cetera. So a vi is lambda vi.
So we'll look at AP now. We go across, and now I'm just going to write that version of P that we have at the top of the board. V1, V2, Vn. So we're going across and down. So we're going to look at this across and down. We'll look at the first column right here. How would I ignore the other columns for now? How would I get that first column? Does it matter about anything beyond the first column in my P matrix? Only depends on that first column in the P matrix to get the first column in the product matrix right there. Okay, so now that we see that, what will that first column be? What's A times V1? Lambda. lambda V1. So our first column is lambda V1. All we're doing is basically that multiplication right there is what we're going to do for that to get the first column right there. So our first column here is going to be lambda V1, or I should say lambda 1 V1 because you have to get the right uh, eigenvector eigenvalue. Can't just grab any eigenvalue. All right, so that's our first column right there. What is our second column going to be? The eigen, second eigenvalue times second eigenvector. So it'll be lambda 2 v2. And etc. And the last one will be lambda n vn. Because the lambdas are different, I can't just factor lambda out. If it was all the same lambda, I could factor lambda out of the matrix. But unfortunately, I can't do that. Uh, however, let's now look at dp. So the d matrix was lambdas on the diagonal. And then p, all right, columns. So it is definitely true that a <coughs> this dp algebraically would be the other way around, but what we're going to do is uh, look at it more carefully and hopefully see that it's the same thing. All right, so this is d times p. We're going to go across and down just like we always do on multiplication. And let's look at, again, just the first column right here. So if I'm going to get the first column, all I have to do is look at the first column in my P matrix to get the first column in the product matrix. So if I multiply across and down, I'm going to get in my upper left, my first position, I'm going to get lambda 1 times the first entry in V1 plus a whole bunch of zeros. My So that'll be... Oh, I hate double subscripting. I'm going to just go V11. So that's the first vector, first entry in your first vector right there. Now I'm going to go to the second entry here. That lambda should have a 1 on it also. Now my second entry right here. We're going to go across the second row. It looks like it's going to be lambda 2 v1 2. That's not good. 
I want a lambda one there. So what I think we need to do is switch the order. I have a feeling my notes are wrong. So I'm gonna put the D matrix on the other side and cross my fingers and hope it works. So we'll go P, D, P, D, Notes don't do that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go across and down. Ooh, all right. It's going to be tricky because we're going to be traversing the first entries in each vector one at a time. So it's going to be kind of tricky. Uh, so as you go across the first row, I think we're going to have to double subscript here. All right, so let's go a little more detail into what's really inside the P matrix. So we got V11. This is the first vector, second entry. So we'll go one, two. V13. Right, we'll start the dot 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 right there. <coughs> Vn V1n. And we got second vector, first row, second vector, second row, second vector, nth row. Dot 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 dot. Vn. 1, Vn2, Vnn. All right. So we're going first row, first column to get the upper left position right there. So it looks like it'll be lambda 1, V11 plus a bunch of zeros after that. Because this is all, I didn't write them in, but these are all zeros off the diagonal. So that'd be a bunch of zeros. Now let's go to second, uh, first column, second row. So I'm gonna move to the second row here. All right, what will I get in the next position down? Lambda one, V1, V1, two. So we lambda one, V1, two, plus a bunch of zeros. Now we'll go dot, dot, dot. We'll just check the last row to be safe here. It seems like it should be lambda one, V one, N, but we'll just be careful. So I'll get lambda one, V one, N, plus a bunch more zeros after that. I think if we do the second column, that should be enough to see the pattern. So we'll do the second column now. So we'll do first row, second column. What entry do I get right there? So we do have a zero above lambda two. So it's gonna be zero V11 plus lambda two V12 plus a bunch more zeros. So we need to get lambda two v two one. And then we'll go row two. So that'll be lambda two v two two and then all the other products are zero. Dot, 
dot dot. And last up, lambda two v n v two n v two n. All right. So if I went the third row, I would just get lambda three vector three, etc., all the way to the last, which will be lambda n v n one lambda n v n Two lambda n v n n. All right, and then we'll write it a little nicer. So our entire first column will be lambda one v one because that's just all the entries from v one right there, and that's the entire first column lambda two v two. Lambda n v n like that. All right, so I better fix my notes. All right, so that's the algebra that's going on. You can kind of go uh, column by column when we do this. So what we're going to do now is diagonalize uh, some matrices but we're going to first determine if it's possible. So I just gave you a theorem right there. We're going to try to diagonalize, but we're going to determine if it's diagonalizable by actually finding the eigenvectors. And if they're independent, then we can diagonalize. If they're not independent, this is an if and only if. So unlike that theorem we were using yesterday, it was a one directional theorem. This theorem, if you have one, you have both. So we're going to look and see, are the eigenvectors independent? And then if they are, we can diagonalize. And these are going to be three by three, so it's going to take a little bit of work to find the eigenvalues, then the vectors, and then determine if they're independent. And if they are, we're going to do this process. So we're chaining together quite a few things in a row. So hopefully you're ready. So can our A matrix, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 5, 4, can A be diagonalized? If so, do it. All right, so I'm going to write down the steps that I mentioned. So for, we, we need to get the eigenvectors, but first we're going to get eigenvalues. Second, get eigenvectors. Third, determine if eigenvectors are linearly independent. And then fourth, uh, we're going to actually diagonalize. So that'll be the tricky part. So I'll put a question mark right there. So I'll help you with step four. So you should be able to get through step one, two, and three. Actually, diagonalize will be the easy part in terms of the amount of time we're going to spend. I've already given you all the pieces to do it. So I'll give you a two-minute head start. And it's okay if you only have two eigenvalues, that's okay. You can still get more than one eigenvector for an eigenvalue. So don't get discouraged if you don't get three eigenvalues. It's the eigenvectors that are important.
questions? So let's make sure we agree on our characteristic polynomial. Anybody? So raise your hand if you agree with this one. All right, so this one's probably right for the few of you didn't didn't agree. Math by democracy. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter what, what people think. <laughs> it matters what's true. Sometimes you can get lucky on a third degree and go factor by grouping, where you group like this. However, these are all, all the coefficients here are co-prime, so factor by grouping is not going to work. When so when I say co-prime, one and four are prime, relatively prime, and then five and two, are, well they're prime themselves. But there's nothing I can factor lambda squared out of here, but there's nothing I can factor out of the second set that would help me out. So fact by grouping works if you're lucky. So I'm going rational zero theorem, which I did not do on your answer key on your last quiz. I can't remember. So it's factors of two are factors of one, so that's just one and two themselves, and plus and minus. So I'll call this P of lambda for polynomial of lambda. One. That negative one won't make a difference in terms of it being zero or not, so I could pretty much ignore it.
So I got one as a lambda uh, value. So how do I know I have a problem with what I'm doing? There's a remainder. So if this was an actual divisor and I divide it correctly, there would be no remainder. So I'd expect a zero remainder at the bottom. Uh oh. You can't, so it takes a long time to recheck long division. It's just long, there's no, no real way around it. But what I can do first, what I like to do is recheck, is one really a zero of this polynomial? That's usually a lot faster to check. So if you screwed that up, your division's never gonna work out. So I always check the faster thing to check, and then if that works, come back. So I'm gonna retry one. Your mistake is, uh Four. Oh, I added. All right, so all that's gone. So you got negative four. Wait, oh, so it just should have been negative three. Yeah, so just flip the sign. And on top it should have been. Negative. Oh, yes. Lambda plus three lambda subtract zero two lambda minus two. All right, that looks a lot better. Plus two minus two subtract zero. All right. So P of lambda is now lambda minus one times lambda squared minus three lambda plus two. Hopefully we can factor this guy out and just get lucky here without using quadratic or complete the square. Minus two minus one. All right, so we got all the values, lambda equals one and lambda equals two. Generally, when you get a repeat, a lot of times that means you're gonna get two eigen uh, vectors, two independent eigen vectors in that null space. Not always true, but we saw uh, one show up twice, so there's a chance uh, that it'll get two eigen vectors. Now you gotta make sure your one doesn't look like your i and doesn't look like absolute value. <laughs>
So I only got one eigenvector out of the eigenvalue of one. So any questions on getting this eigenvector here? Normally I would have multiplied row two, uh, one and two by negative one, but I think at this point it doesn't really matter anymore. It's just some algebra. All right, so that is the first eigenvector. We're gonna get eigenvector for eigenvalue two now. Now what I'm doing on these, I'm setting up the null space equation right there. So it's all vectors such that when I multiply it by that a minus lambda i gets zero. So I'm just explicitly setting up the null space system right here. I got the eigenvector one, two, four. All right, questions on the second eigenvector. So now we're gonna run back to that theorem and read it one more time, that if and only if diagonalizable theorem. All right, so our matrix was three by three. So we need to have three linearly independent eigenvectors. I'm pretty sure our eigenvectors are linearly independent, but what's the problem? We got two, so we don't have three. So it's not going to be diagonalizable. This is the if and only if. So if one of them fails, they're both failing. All right, so it is not diagonalizable. Where's our, somewhere that question is. Uh, no kind of be diagonalized, obviously. All right, so we'll do one more example. Man, that took a lot of brain power. 
pretty much puts everything together in one question. All right, so we'll do another three by three. So we'll call this one B, negative one, zero, one, three, zero, negative three, one, zero, negative one. So can this matrix B be diagonalized? If so, do it. All right, so I'm going to give you a hint. This one can be diagonalized. So you should get three eigenvectors that are independent. And you got a problem if any of the eigenvectors is zero. The zero vector, because they're never going to be independent. So I'm doing my algebra maybe a slightly different way. Instead of expanding and then using rational zero theorem, I noticed that there was a single lambda there. And I realized, I need to highlight the next lambda. I realized in those two terms, I could factor out a lambda in both of them. So I just went for it right there. You can expand it out and combine like terms and all that. You get something very similar.
All right, so we got zero and negative one. So any questions? So who got zero and negative one? Uh-oh, no hands. Maybe it's still working. Okay. What two? I'm kidding. That two. <laughs> so maybe negative two and zero instead. <laughs> Details. All right, so zero is repeated twice, so there's a chance we're going to get two eigenvectors out of that one. So I think we've got just enough time. We'll get the eigenspace uh, that corresponds to zero now. So it'll be minus zero i. So we're setting the equation bx equal to zero. Now you should have felt something a little fishy about the matrix B when you wrote it down. There are rows that are multiples of other rows. I think everything's a multiple of the first row. And that should be very obvious when you do one move here. variables x2 and x3 and better not use t for both of them or you're going to uh, think you have one free variable so don't go t and t so I'm going to go uh, t and s are the two I usually go with carefully construct our x back together with x1, 2, and 3. So x1 is s, x2 is t, x3 is s again. So there's two different variables in here. So I'm going to write a t, uh, a t vector, 0, t, 0, and an s vector, s, 0, s. So I'm pulling the free variables apart, basically. And then we're going to have t times 0, 1, 0, plus s times 1, 0, 1. And what we're looking at are the two eigenvectors that correspond to 0 right there. Hopefully I've given you homeworks that have two eigenvectors. I think almost every example I've done had one eigenvector, so I'm glad we got two finally. Uh, but be aware there can be lots of eigenvectors, usually not more than two or three, but it's not always one. All right, so these eigenvectors, are these independent? Yep, if there's only two and they're not multiples, they're independent. Once you get three, then you have to do a little more work to be sure that they're not, into, uh, that they're not dependent. So we'll get our other eigenvector uh, tomorrow, and then, re and then hopefully see their linear independence, and then reconstruct all this together to diagonalize.